Welcome to the next session by Argument of Podcast. So today with me, I am joined with Ritwik Guha Mustafi. He is a fourth year BA LLB student from Christ University. So he is actually uh, the research editorial and legal associate at this NGO called Project Bhutan. He also interned in several prestigious law firms like Advani and Co. and also in K N S Partners as well. His interest, especially with regard to the legal field, lies in areas of criminal law, intellectual property rights, and also with regard to public policy and governance, A D R, etc. Uh, so in this session, uh, Vrithvik. Can you please draw uh, uh, the attention of the viewers with regard to what the entire commotion is about, or with regard to this CA Act in particular? Like uh, just recently, we had the uh, activist named Akhil Gogoi, who is actually from Assam. He is also an MLA, by the way. He he is actually free. He has actually been released as well. And th- after he uh, got got gotten released, he has stated that he will. continue the the agitation against the ca or the the citizenship amendment act as such so uh, what's the entire commotion about the ca and and if you could just share your insight with regard to what the citizenship actually means to each and every each and every one of us as indians and also to those who are seeking refuge or those who are trying to seek for citizenship in in our country as such all right so good evening and again we are going to converse about the provisions of caa the critical analysis therein and again the feasibility of nrc npr etc and pro- suggest some recommendations which are practical and feasible enough in the current scenario now uh, when we speak about you know citizenship amendment act and the entire controversy behind it we you know need to understand the fact that why exactly is there such attention why is the concept of citizenship that important that there has been a country wide protest behind this so when you speak about citizenship a uh, citizenship is more than a political participation within the existing framework of laws and institutions it includes amongst other things it includes the critical uh, you know analysis and the critical overview of the protests that question the foundation of the framework in itself so one side of citizenship consists of rights accorded to the citizens and the other side consists of the duties that are to be followed by the citizens right so it's a balance between the rights and the duties now what does citizenship basically implies i mean nothing technical in a nutshell if you see citizenship implies the membership of a state it bestows a status upon you ki all right joel vergis or ritwik guha mustafi is the citizen of this particular state and it grants recognition and you know it implies towards a correlation between you and the laws of the country and participation in the activities of state so that's basically what citizenship is so it's a you know the foundation behind your involvement in a country's proceedings in a country's activities right be it political social economical cultural religious whatever so that's the foundation of citizenship now when we talk about citizenship in india when we focus our attention towards india you know joel so uh, citizenship is provided in part 2 of the constitution not going into the de- nitty gritties of it and also you know there is a citizenship act of 1955 so basically citizen you can't become a citizen just by you know virtue of birth it has various types of uh, uh, methods of being a citizen such as birth descent naturalization registration incorporation of territory etc 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 yeah so now when we speak about that the fact that this citizenship this particular when we speak about the citizenship act now when we focus and correlate the citizenship act 1955 with the citizenship amendment act so this is not the first time when the citizenship act has been amended you know so before that there have been amendments in 2003 2005 yeah. now there is this 2019 amendment mm-hmm. so when we speak when as today's topic is focusing both on caa and nrc so 2003 amendment 2003 amendment of the citizenship act brought about the concept of nrc that it specifically spoke about the concept of nrc you know so yeah. now 
when uh, why is this particular caa 2019 this much contentious this much controversial why has it you know evoked a nationwide protest the fact is that before we go on to the uh, government uh, government's intention behind the legislature or for that matter amendment there we need to understand why which particular part of caa 2019 is contentious like so if uh, you look just, at yeah uh, just a button like but previously yeah. when we had in 2003 as well like there was no like there, there, there was mention about like example if you are remember manmohan singh plea, pleading to to lk adwani with regard to the 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 persecution of of the uh, of especially those who are the, the, the minorities while i am on this subject madam i would like to point out that with regard to the treatment of refugees after the partition of our countries the minorities in countries like bangladesh have faced persecution and it is our moral obligation that if circumstances force people these unfortunate people to seek refuge in our country our approach to granting citizenship to these unfortunate persons should be most liberal i un- i sincerely hope that the honorable uh, deputy prime minister will bear this in mind in chart out the future course of action with regard to the citizenship act thank you uh, mr advani the minorities in pakistan are also suffering uh, they have to be taken care of too i fully endorse we are nobody is speaking on but then what we saw over here was that like uh, for the first time i think there was there was an inclusion of the term uh, religion in uh, uh, in place trying to uh, exclude a particular uh, community as there it was mentioned about minority but there was no uh, exclusion of that particular uh, minority or, or or religious community in the in uh, coming under the purview of the, of the act so how does how how does that correlate with the current intention and what what 2019 is uh, hugely contentious about yeah sure so where, as as you said regarding you know the usage of religion as an mm. overt criteria for this particular ca 2019 there is an allegation there has been too much contentions that for the first time religion religion as a ground has been used overtly while you know deciding or framing a legislature so in this part i mean taking the difference from the other you know amendments prior amendments of ca and this particular 2019 amendment what we can see is that what happened in ca 2019 the provisions of ca 2019 were framed with the intention of you know providing protection to the religiously persecuted minority communities that was the basic logic of the government and yeah. they often blamed the erstwhile congress government that had the not you know agreed for a partition in 1947 we would not have had this particular legislation so now when you speak when you you know back up your logic with a, with an age old activity which may have been the best thing to do at that time mm-hmm. or may not it is a debatable topic again which is not the topic of discussion right now yeah, so yeah. when you back up your logic with that so your logic seems a bit redundant Isn't now it? when you when you see the ca 2019 what does it say it provides the protection to hindu buddhist sikhs jains parsis christian these minorities from the countries of pakistan afghanistan and uh, bangladesh. bangladesh yeah now yeah so the logic the basic logic is protect the religiously persecuted communities the names of the communities are expressly mentioned right yeah. and the three countries have been mentioned now comes the contentious issue where why hasn't the caa 2019 mentioned muslims anywhere in the entire act right in the entire amendment act for that matter and secondly why only those three countries why only pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh and again when you are speaking about religious persecution you should know that pakistan afghanistan bangladesh they are muslim majority countries yeah. now there are there is a you know a huge chance that there may be various muslims who have been religiously persecuted there but under the 2019 amendment acts language or provisions 
those Muslim communities are oh. not getting any protection. And this particular factor has been, you know, contended heavily that why has been there this differentiation uh, with the Muslim communities, you know, mm-hmm. and there like, is no... Like, I, I, I just have a question with regard to that. Like, uh, yes, we do have uh, Ahmadiyas and, and several minorities in the Muslim community, but then is their first choice of uh, of seeking refuge is in India? Or like, is, like, usually when we have Sikhs and Hindus, they seek refuge uh, especially in, uh, in India and, and what they mentioned is before to, uh, 31st December 2014. So till that particular point, have there been any instances of those uh, uh, Ahmadiyas and other uh, other minorities of, 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 of the Islamic community coming to India for seeking refuge? So will, will that be a ground? Like if, they, if it's not there, that means uh, well as when it's only these communities which, which will come to India for seeking, for seeking the uh, citizenship as such. Will that be a logic? Yeah. Level? Uh, see, when you say like that, so first of all, speaking about the refuge in India part, it depends on case to case basis. So suppose I am a Muslim, I am a really, I am a part of the religious persecuted minority community in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh. If I have the necessary contacts and economic means and some other requirements, then I can definitely choose that whether I want to go to India or to some other Muslim majoritarian country wherein my culture and religious beliefs are same. Now, the reason why the Muslim you know, minorities want to come to India is that India anyway is a secular state, right? It does not have any official religion. So there is always a sense of security. If I do come to India, the Indian secular laws and the secularity provision in the constitution itself will protect me from that as opposed to some other Muslim majoritarian country, which may have some other, you know, strict stringent laws about religion and religious practices. Right. So that is one thing for the sense of security. They want to come here. Now, critically analyzing the logic of the government, the logic was to protect the religiously persecuted communities and the contentions are, and again, our questions have been that why not include Muslims into it? Second, why only Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, because there are other countries as well, other neighboring countries as well, Tibet, you know, Sri Lanka, yeah. where the minorities have been persecuted from, a, you know, from uh, very uh, in particular, beginning. Yeah. yeah. So why not those countries? And again, thirdly, why only religious persecution? Why yeah. not any other form of persecution? Economic why not economic persecution? Yeah. Why not, you know, a standard of living or for that matter, you know, belief, uh, any standard of belief uh, type of persecution? Why not that? Why only religious persecution? So when we sit and think about these things, we do get to know that the government has not provided a specific logic behind all these acts. And another important thing is CAA 2019 completely excludes the sixth schedule states. That is Assam, Meghalaya, uh, Mizoram, and uh, I guess Meghalaya. So it completely excludes them. Now understand this, that those Northeastern states share border with Bangladesh, right? And therefore, as and when they are removed from the CAA's purview. So now there is a fear specifically among the people of Assam, because Assam has been a, you know, center of uh, uh, religion based and yeah, exactly. It has been a center of uh, this kind of violence earlier as well, right? So these states have the fear that if we are not in in the purview of the entire act, then the, you know, illegal immigrants or any other uh, immigrant from Bangladesh can claim that, okay, we have been religiously persecuted. We are coming to India. We will be protected. Right. So exclusion of the Northeastern states have not, has not been explained. The rationale behind it has not been explained. So all in all, what, what are the, you know, contentious things. Firstly, non-exclusion of Muslims. Yes. Secondly, non-exclusion of yeah, non-exclusion of the northeastern states. Yes. Thirdly, difference, unreasonable difference between religious persecution and other forms of persecution. And fourthly, non-exclusion of the neighboring states, right? Other neighboring states apart from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh. Mm-hmm. So the 
so these differences these uh, classifications which the language of caa 2019 you know provides for there are no specific rationale behind these logics right uh, behind these classifications so there is no logic now when we come to the thing of nrc when we come to the issue of nrc so it's not that this is the first time government is you know saying that apply nrc ha huh, it is the Absolutely. first time when government is saying ki apply uh, apply nrc pan india basis so yeah. this is the first time it is happening for the entire india before this nrc was there in assam right now the assam record of nrc is not very good why because in assam when nrc started off in assam and regarding uh, and according to the 2019 2018-19 amnesty international india's studies and examination reports so when nrc started out in assam the basic focus was to you know identify the valid uh, citizens in assam and deport away the illegal immigrants or now invalid citizens back to the places where they belong and for that uh, so now when we speak about the assam model of nrc so it hmm. basically focused on that you know suppose joel you you are an resident of assam and we are talking about the period of 1970s 1980s when nrc began in assam so now with you as a resident of assam and me as an nrc official my focus would be that has your name appeared in the voters list of any constituencies do you have those specific documents that says that joel burgis is a bona fide resident of that of the state of assam and by extension a valid citizen of india now the problem with nrc is that the officials have to go house to house basis to collect the relevant documents right of all the members in the house now understand we are talking about assam which is not a very big state but in any case assam's population is cannot be counted on fingertips right it has a good dense population if you ask me so now imagine 1970s 1980s where the technological development was not so much and me as an nrc official i am going to joel's house i am asking for all the documents then i am going to some other 10 people's house asking for all the documents the problem here is the task is very strenuous secondly the officials in many cases the officials the nrc officials did not have the background knowledge of the cultural and the other you know educational religious or caste beliefs of assam so they did not have any background knowledge about the region right so at that how, point how does that time. come into play like how does like knowing about like because this is general statistics or, or general data what you're seeking out for right if you have if you have if, yeah. you are, if you are actually taking part in the elections or if you, have, if you actually have a school or all uh, other kind of as such so how does the cultural aspect or or those with, with regard to the uh, caste communities play into uh, play in, play a big role in the nrc as such see when uh, see i mean uh, let's apply the logic of the basic political science right so hmm. in political science why is a you know uh, when you speak about uh, political science the election of a particular mp or an mla right from a region so it's expected that that particular representative is at least for, for example jharkhand why is there a reservation regarding an adivasi that is a cst person in some of the high officials of government why is it because you know though it is expected it is reasonably expected it need not be necessarily true but it is reasonably expected that that per- particular scst communities representative will, will understand the ground realities of scst communities and thereby make provisions or you know take steps beneficial to those communities and for other communities as well now applying that basic logic now when i am going house to house for collecting information understand that i cannot just burst into your house and ask for documents i have to you know build up a conversation first tell you what the reason is because understand i am asking you for confidential very precious documents and it is connected to your right to privacy right mm-hmm. so yeah. i have to build up a conversation i have to know that if you do not have the documents with you why is it that you do not have the documents with you is there a background has there been 
you know anything uh, going on with you any requirements you would have had that you do not have the documents with you now so that's why in the nrc officials were not uh, you know very uh, knowledgeable regarding the uh, background of assam right the demographic background that's what they lacked the basic background the demographic background of assam mm. and secondly it was a strenuous job so there were bound to be mistakes and thirdly the amnesty international st- uh, 2018 19 statistics and re- research reports pointed out that even for minuscule mistakes the people lost their rights of citizenship or rather lost their rights of residence in assam so mm. nrc all in all was a faulty model in assam because it was not implemented properly hmm. the idea was good the idea was good as was the idea of demonetization demonetization but the only difference was it was not implemented properly but exactly. how was the how was the supreme court's view on the entire excess of nrc like how, was it did it find favorable enough or was it also very uh, cautious about the entire move yeah. of the nrc yeah so basically what happened that uh after uh, these nrc's uh, discrepancies came into you know light the tribunals act was passed the illegal migrant determination by tribunals act which now you know shifted the burden of proof of illegal residents from the residents to the oh. nrc officials oh. right now the, the validity of this act was challenged on various grounds that you know it takes away the authenticity it takes away uh, the uh you know authority that the nrc officials do possess it makes them puppets in the hands of uh, the you know uh, uh, interested people in the legislature and therefore that illegal migrant determination by tribunals act it was you know struck down by the supreme court okay. now when as and when this happens the fact is that now why is there contention with nrc right the mm. model that the government is suggesting it's actually almost the copy paste of the assam model now okay. since the assam model had that much faults those many faults the assam model had those many excesses discrepancies etc now the people are like we cannot have such a faulty model applied pan india okay. right even even with the technological development jewel even with the technological development it by no stretch of imagination can we say that india is a small country from kashmir to kanyakumari of right course. so and again the if we are to you know copy paste the entire assam nrc model to the entire of india now understand how many discrepancies would rise up on a daily basis right mm-hmm. for minuscule mistakes for the fact that you know officials are not aware about the demographics of a region for the facts of you know uh, the citizens not having the document at that particular point of time for some valid reasons but the officials are not you know very much cooperative and another thing about government uh, you know activities and this i guess applies generally to all the government activities that the process is usually long and strenuous at least for mm. those who cannot afford you know correct means and measures and you know what we call in hindi as jugards so mm. if you don't have jugards it's going to be you know a long and strenuous process for you so suppose joel you sit if you are sitting right now in kerala for example right and mm. the nrc model is implemented Uh, and uh, i come to your house with the for documents and all and suppose you do provide me with all the documents now i have to check all the documents i have to you know uh, check the authenticity and validity of all the documents then get back to you with the uh, you know final certification that okay you are a valid resident now that examination of the documents that you know scrutiny it hmm. is your document as well as thousands of people around you okay. so even even though you may have the necessary means and measures to get some jugards done with the government officials but someone else may not have that right and for that someone else this particular faulty model would be economically and you know in other basis as well non feasible right yeah. so that's the faulty model of assam that has been protested against mm-hmm. by uh, vehemently by some of the non bjp ruled states specifically by bengal because bengal mm. has been the center of uh, religious and communal you know 
conflicts for, for the past few years right so yeah. specifically by bengal it has been uh, you know protested against on these grounds now when uh, we speak about the current situation right when but, we but, speak about but has today, the nrc because uh, what the government is saying that are the nrc draft is yet to be released so how how do we contend on how far the implementation can work throughout india because as of now we don't really have enough uh, information as to what the government can possibly do with regard to the nrc in place we just have an existing model and depending on that we are able to judge if that model works throughout the country but then as of now we don't like the government hasn't really come out, come out uh, uh, clearly uh, defining that stance as such yeah now when we speak about the implementation of nrc and its future ramifications the simple fact is because of the faulty model of assam nrc it cannot be you know copied as it is for the india that's one we have established second is amnity international india's studies and research reports also include recommendations some 10 15 points of recommendations and also india is a signatory to the iccpr icescr and udhr so mm. these international conventions india is a signatory to right now when we speak about implementation of caa nrc rules regulations bylaws etc now we have to take into account that all these materials all the principles on which we have to formulate our statutes right all of them are there in front of us the material is there all the ingredients are there hmm. now how do we cook up the ingredients so as to you know the end result is a good one so my suggestion would be study the amnesty in, for, for the government is that study the amnesty international report look through the recommendations connect it with the faulty model of assam the points where it had been faulty just replace those faulty points with the uh, amnesty international india's recommendations as and how it's feasible for region to region basis and thereafter you can also focus on the principles of equality a uh, non discrimination and uh, you know right to life and dignity etc from the iccpr i i c uh, i c e s c r and uh, udhr so these things you can always refer to and also definitely there is constitution of india itself right so yeah. maybe you won't even need to look through these international conventions if you are looking through the you know this particular constitution now why is the const- and how is the constitutional validity of caa challenged right so in protests you may have seen people you know reading constitution they are protesting by holding constitution in their hand and reading it right reading the preamble now just focus now let's revert our attention towards article 14 of the constitution hmm. article 14 straight away says equality before law and equal protection for uh, in front of law for all the you know people Yeah. right now in the i am i guess i am getting the case names correct when i say it was ak gopalan versus state of madras when the test of equality was laid down right so when you provide any discrimination when you exclude someone from mm. the protection of law or when you exclude someone from equality before law you mm. need to have a intelligible differentia for that particular thing so there are two things which were said in that case intelligible differentia and reasonable nexus with the object of the act right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. when we see the classifications made by caa first of all there has been no specific logic by government behind those arbitrary classifications secondly the statement of government of implementing nrc pan india based basis it can be done but the model itself has to be rectified so hmm. now suppose uh, when we speak about caa and the differentiations made so it's high time that the government either amends the caa uh, caa the language of the caa and includes muslims and includes the other provisions as it may deem fit to so as to bring the act within the purview of article 14 Yeah. otherwise if not if not if, if it is not feasible for the government it can be recommended that you come up with maybe some other bills some other regulations rules etc wherein you include all those exclusions you have made and you frame something else for those particular you know areas of classification this can be done either you amend the existing thing otherwise you create a new thing in any case if you are excluding something 
you need to have that intelligible differentiator you yeah, need to like, have that uh, really especially with regard to excluding them like the the general generally how the person seeks uh, citizenship like there will be a specific term period right so if example if muslims are excluded out of the current ca they 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 may be still able to enter through the through the the, the previous act of the through through uh, through the the, the 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 general person instead of the streamlined process through the ca right because the ca excludes them but they can still enter through the 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 general process of, of seeking citizenship just that the time will differ as such so how do you look at that instead of uh, like the, the contention from from many people like, since they are uh, since these minorities have been persecuted and they need they need to seek a home immediately as such So, so hence, uh, we need to streamline the process. But then, these may be the 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 majority uh, or, or those who may who might be persecuted for for other reasons. They can still end, they are, they won't be stopped from entering the country. But then, they 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 can seek uh, for the uh, citizenship through the the normal process as, as such. Yeah. So, I mean, see, regarding the entry of the excluded communities, regarding that, I mean, I already said that they can. always you know now that they have got the month of july 2021 to come up with rules bylaws and other regulations hmm. so by that thing by virtue of those uh, you know uh, to be drafted rules regulations and bylaws they can always make you know the changes the productive changes or you know the what do you say uh, the proper amendments in the act itself hmm. so as to make the entry process more streamlined and also again the other provisions of ca 2019 has reduced down the period of naturalization from 11 years to 5 years for the you know communities mentioned so even that can be looked upon so uh, that can be also looked upon so give the muslims entry first of all make the muslims a viable community under caa for protection and secondly if you are reducing the period of naturalization so provide the same reduction to muslims as well and if you are excluding you have you should have a good reasonable next uh, sorry intelligible differentia behind it you have to have a good rationale behind it right so these are the few recommendations that we can give so again summing it all up first of all you can look up at the amnesty international india's recommendations you can always refer to the principles of uh, the international conventions you have signed which focus on the human rights aspect specifically you can again refer continuously to the constitution uh, constituent assembly debates discussions and the constitution itself so as to make sure that all the you know acts you make or the rules regulations or bylaws therein have to be within the purview of the constitution because again it's the supreme law of land right fourth am either you know amend the act by adding the muslim communities and providing them the same benefits you are providing under the ca 2019 to the already mentioned communities you can do that uh, or otherwise another feasible if it is feasible i don't think it will be economically and you know time wise feasible for the government if but if it is then uh, you can either create a, a separate thing uh, and connect it with the ca 2019 as maybe a separate small uh, another amendment or another bill if you may and then connect it with the ca 2019 and by extension connect it to the 1955 citizenship act so these are a few recommendations that can be done and un- under no circumstances you know the unreasonable infringement of fundamental rights should be done because although india is a secular state there have been histories of you know extreme religious riots in india for example that ayodhya mandir babri masjid or you know the sikh persecution after the indira gandhi uh, yes what do you say assassination okay. yeah. so these things are there so under no circumstances part 3 should be sir part 3 of the constitution the fundamental rights should be circumvented okay. so under no case that should happen because any case uh, that's what i was saying that you know with the view on the ongoing religious and communal disputes and conflicts in various parts of india be it uttar pradesh be it bengal be it maybe some of the southern states now keeping all of that in mind so the legislature and for that matter the government the legislature and executive have to keep this in mind that under no circumstances any unreasonable circumvention of fundamental rights should be there right mm. so because if that happens that would be an added tension and an added burden because 
in any case people are feeling a bit of insecurity insecurity right because of the ongoing conflicts uh, and other tensions now if this particular you know ca 2019 nrc is put exactly how it is then it will it has already created so much of ruckus throughout india if it is Im implemented completely finally it would again you know uh, create that much ruckus it would again create that much nationwide protest and all which again looking at the lockdown and its aftermath it is not a you know viable option for the government economically politically socially culturally in whatever sense yeah. so all the, now in light of all the analysis we have done the recommendations which we have suggested and deliberated upon and the logic of the government and the rationale behind the act which we have seen throughout this discussion what we can say is you need to be extremely scrupulous while drafting and while executing a particular law because india you know about india it's there is a muhavra i think a kahawat i guess in hindi it's a saying in hindi ki yahan ek kos pe boli badle do kos pe pani so you know yeah. it, everyone came yeah everyone came the speech differentiates and every 2 km the taste of water is different so that such is the diversity of india keeping all that in view you need to be extremely scrupulous about the legislations you uh, you know draft speci especially if it is related to the socio cultural and religious aspects of the public because there is extreme sensitivity regarding all those issues right mm -hmm. because i we have seen the religious riots about ayodhya mandir and babri masjid we have seen the persecution of sikh community after the indira gandhi assassination so we have seen all so even in delhi as well even in delhi what happened yeah. after the after the after the protests and and the clash as such or where were the, the uh, two years a year back what yeah a year back yeah yeah exactly so there have been uh, riots regarding all this so there is a high possibility that if such an act with its discriminatory language and discriminatory language without being backed up by a proper logic or proper intelligible differentia if it is implemented it would maybe again give rise to such predicaments in the future which is not viable for the country right now mm. given the given the you know ongoing covid pandemic So yeah, that's all. I guess I have to say from my side regarding this topic. So anything you would like to contribute towards the end? Yeah. So towards the end, I think like you have brought some very poignant points. Uh, what you have brought up throughout the entire session, uh, I think the, the especially the aspect of uh, excluding of the, of the community, there has to be some kind of dif like reasonable differentiate different here, which which the, which the government needs to really seek out for con considering the current climate as such, and also what. the several uh, reports have also been stated with regard to the the affairs of of, of what happened the entire ruckus of what happened during the nrc in assam as such but then uh, my question to you would also be like what happens to the uh, to those who have been excluded out of example if it happens in in in, in the entire nation as such or what happened in assam what happens to them if they are excluded out of uh, out of the list is there uh, is there a particular center they are gone there and they are Uh, after that, they can try to make an application, a reapplication, and things like that. Or how does the entire process uh, actually happen after you lose your uh, your your chance to be a part of in, uh, part of the of, of the list as such? See, uh, since this is a governmentally drafted, mandated, and executed legislation, hmm. so now when you approach the government officials only, suppose you have suppose you are a government official, you are the central government, right? You are the central government, Joel. You have mandated. and executed this caa nrc completely without any rectification hmm. now the people right the people who have been excluded now if they go to you only then you may give you know some uh, uh, you know what do you say consolation ki okay we will look into it but again government facilities and government activities it's too much long drawn out us the viable option before the excluded communities is in case uh, the ca nrc thing uh, doesn't happen go go uh, you know as per their plan hmm. so the viable option in front of them is to resort to judicial uh, you know judicial uh, or you know legal resort hmm. so hmm. they can go to the uh, you know courts and uh, just ask ki okay please our fundamental rights have been uh, 
you know violated they have been violated without any reason we have been excluded without any proper reason and rationale behind the action and therefore we want the upholding of the fundamental rights it is not a situation of national emergency it's not a situation of state emergency it's not a situation of financial emergency so government cannot say that okay the union only has all the powers it can only decide what is best for its citizens it can decide provided that there is reason behind all that so judiciary whose function is to up, uphold the law right so judiciary's function come there so the courts can either take suo moto cognizance of such cases otherwise they can be you know uh, they can entertain the public interest litigation right in these aspects and therefore call upon the government so as to, uh, call upon the government to show the cause so they can you know uh, give us show cause notice to the government or they can straight away say ki okay come before us appear before us and tell us what has been the progress that you have made in this aspect these people are saying that you have violated their fundamental rights what do you have to say in your defense and how are you going to mitigate the same factor so that's what courts can do right so there is always that uh, legal resort option that you have the you know excluded communities have uh, regarding a particular center a particular thing there hasn't been a particular center or a particular office or a particular department set up for you know these kind of citizenship religion based disputes and all i mean if it is economically viable for the nation right now you can you know obviously create such a department and fill it up with the officers which include a mix of legislature judiciary and executive right and also some people who are really trained really educated in the socio cultural and political background of india so the you know eminent jurists maybe or eminent scholars and professors you can you know compose a board and keep it at the department yeah. if that is economically viable right mm-hmm. otherwise there is always the door of courts and again when we speak about courts the litigation process is again yeah. extremely yeah. long run and strenuous so it will be another different tension only for the litigants right yeah. so therefore to you know reduce the burden on the judiciary reduce the burden on the system it's much more viable for the government to rectify whatever mistakes they have done and to resonate all the provisions they have you know given in the time that is given to them so samay rehte rehte khud ko bacha lo that's a saying in hindi samay rehte rehte bacha lo khud ko so you save yourself whilst you can so draft a proper policy draft a proper act amend reamend and you know include the make the entire act inclusive secular democratic equal right what is given in the preamble you make it according to that and thereafter you can implement it and then if there are glitches here and there it is still fine the courts can handle it but if it is a glitch of fundamental right itself then it will be a long drawn process right and it would be a huge process like the keshwananda bharti case right we lost students yeah. that case is a nightmare for us right mm. so like like that case it will be the condition so it's it's you know high time for the government to rectify whatever their mistakes were while they still have time they still have time till july maybe they will extend on to august and september given the you know house given the sitting of the houses given the political situation of the nation elections as well so take time don't implement anything you know in a hasteful manner and whatever you implement you need to have a rationale behind it because law in itself right it cannot be stagnant a law has to be very relevant as per the current circumstances it has to meet the needs and demands of the people and it has to be for the benefit of the general public as a whole so that's the basic objective of any relevant proper valid law right so that's what you know executive and legislature have to keep in mind that's it so i think with that optimistic note of knocking the door of the, of, of the judiciary if if there's any kind of situation which, which uh, arises is quite uh, quite optimistic for that thought, or how the government can actually react on to uh, redrafting the entire policy as such with that being said uh, thank you rithvik for, for uh, coming over to this uh, to the session and uh, sharing your insights about the entire uh, situation at hand also about what the the future of the uh, of the legislation as such 
and uh, do, do uh, viewers also you can you can comment in as well and also, also tell us with regard to how you felt about the session and what kind of points would you like to bring forward with regard to the same uh, so do join us in, in in our next episode the argumenter podcast and you can check out the this uh, particular episode the full length in uh, on youtube on uh, igtv and spotify and uh, other platforms as well with that being said uh, thank you once again for joining us thank you for giving me the opportunity it's been a you know honor and a good experience in, on this platform and maybe you know as the as and when the time and schedule permits i would again like to be you know part of this podcast one you know in future so it's good it, it was a good experience and thank you for the same thank Bye. you so much so do like share and subscribe to our channel on youtube and also follow our instagram page to get regular updates as well